And then, it is possible to say to someone, I will love you forever. This question was not asked by me. It's here, in this little book, The Small Treatise of Great Virtues, Fidelity, Love and Relationship. These three words, these three ideas. Remember, folks, each word carries with it an idea, a semantics, a meaning for that name. So, love, loyalty and relationship. When I ask this question, is it possible to say that you will love someone forever? These three things immediately come to mind. Love, fidelity and relationship. These three words, it has a meaning, a connotation, a little different. Although they walk together almost always, they are not necessarily the same thing. And we're going to make this distinction in today's video. For this, I will use five authors. The first one I just mentioned, who is Professor André Comte Sponville. The other authors, Mario Quintana, so we can give our conversation a Brazilian flavor. Osho, who is a guy I really like. A Indian philosopher guru. I talk a lot about him here on the channel. Soren Kierkegaard. Anyone in the field of philosophy is already familiar with this name. And finally, I'm going to give a brush on Hermeticism, bringing a concept from this school of thought from ancient Egypt, which dates back approximately 5,000 years ago, guys. We will try to decode this issue. In fact, we don't think much about it. Love is as if it were something set that we know we dominate, but we know little about it. Come on, I'm not going to exhaust this topic here in this video. It would be very pretentious of me to say something like that. I could occupy all the videos here on the channel to talk about love, and even so, it would be little. So, we can start debating. I'm going to read a little text, which I took here from Professor André Comte Sponville's book. I made a small adjustment to make the text more fluid. How could I swear that I will always love you, or that I will not love anyone else? Who can swear their feelings? But this is no reason to deny or not recognize what happened. Why would we need to love the present to betray the past? Although we cannot say, state categorically, I will love you forever, what we can do is say that that feeling we experienced will always be faithful. But what do you mean, Andre? I'll give you a personal example. It's even good to talk about this example because I always like to make this clear here on the channel. I'm not here to teach anyone moral lessons. To teach. No, none of that. All the videos I bring here on the channel, I talk to myself first, looking inside. As Professor André Comte Sponville himself says in a text I will quote later, always when we talk about virtues of a somewhat higher morality, everyone who speaks or writes about it is always confronting each other, taking a dig at in our own narcissistic wound. Because whenever we talk, or reflect on a virtue, in this case fidelity, we are always confronted with our own mediocrity. So I speak to myself first, looking at my own weaknesses and measuring the distance between me, between my fragility and the desired virtue. I was married for 13 years. Between marriage and dating, total relationship time, almost 15 years. I had a child with this person. Of course, when we end a relationship, we get upset, right? Even when we are in a relationship, we always try to free ourselves from the responsibility of blaming the other, for our anguish, for our suffering, for our ills. As Sartre would say, hell is other people. Even when we are in a relationship, we always try to free ourselves from the responsibility by blaming the other, for our anguish, for our suffering, for our ills. As Sartre would say, hell is other people. We always want to blame others for our weaknesses. But, after some time apart, with the appropriate temporal distance, I've been separated for three years. Today, I have enormous affection for my ex-wife, mother of my son. If anyone touches a strand of her hair, I'll turn into an animal and I will defend her. Whatever she needs from me, I'll definitely be there. Why that? I have no desire to go back, no. I don't have the slightest pretension nor desire to re-establish a relationship, that's not it but it is a loyalty to lived love, to the feeling experienced. Although the relationship has ended, fidelity, see now the distinction of words, fidelity is not necessarily to the relationship, but to love. 
Now I'm going to insert here a second element that I mentioned at the beginning of the five thoughts, authors, which is hermetism. Love, according to hermeticism, transforms itself and even it can turn into hate. Why? Because they are in the same layer. Just like heat and cold, you don't know where, on the thermometer, cold starts and heat ends and vice versa. At what point in our lives, on the scale of feelings, on the sentimental scale, does love end and hate begin? So it really happens that a person turns love into hate. But it's a pretty extreme thing. Sad. In my case, I'm glad that didn't happen. Love turned into a different kind of love. He walked the scale. So I can be faithful to this lived love. So, in fact, I have a huge affection. Then he transmuted. And talking about hate, hate can even be a psychological device, an artifice for us to deal with a loss. With the fact that I no longer have access to that person. Mario Quintana said the following, Now that it's over, I don't even think about you anymore, but will I never stop remembering that I forgot you? Let's go straight to the text, very inspiring from Osho. Love is not a relationship. It relates. But it's not a relationship. A relationship is a noun, something predetermined. There is no joy or enthusiasm. You can take the relationship forward to fulfill your promises because it is comfortable, convenient, cozy, because if it breaks, it will bring a lot of problems. But love is never and will never be a relationship. He is always a river, flowing, endless. Love knows no end. It is a verb. I read this book by Osho about seven, eight years ago, you know. It's one of the books that opened my mind the most. For those who want to have a different perspective about relationships, this book is a must read. Love, Freedom and Solitude. A new view on relationships. This guy was already talking about solitude, a word that is in fashion. He talked about this in the 70s. So, Osho is Osho. Those who don't know would say bad things about him because the Netflix series, which is a totally biased series. It was definitely a neurotic Christian who made that series. This guy here was a genius. He had some trips. I don't agree 100% with what he said, but you have to know. I'll leave the link in the description for anyone who wants to buy. Before continuing, let me introduce myself. My name is André Frossard. You are here on the Knowledge Society channel. Run the vignette and let's continue. Wait, wait! You already left a like on this video? I've mentioned four authors. I'm giving you very rich content, literally gold here that I'm giving away for free, and you didn't even like the video? You didn't subscribe to the channel? Do this now, please. Sign up and activate the bell. Now, we will continue. I think Osho's text was crystal clear. He made the distinction between love and relationships in a masterful way. Remember that at the beginning of the video, I said that love, relationships and fidelity are things that go together, almost always together, but they are not necessarily the same thing. When we ask ourselves, is it possible to say that I will love someone forever? We automatically think about fidelity in the relationship. The truth is that we mix the words and use them as synonyms. By doing this, equating love, feeling, with fidelity, a virtue or relationship, we place love within a dome, a limiting small conception of what love would be. And that's not what love is. Love is not a relationship. Relationship is a facet of love, but the relationship can end, love cannot. I separated still loving my son's mother, and this happens to a lot of people. Love was buried under a bucket of problems and memories. Negative aspects of that relationship were burying the love, but he was still there. The relationship was over, but the love was there. This happens to a lot of people. So see, love is one thing, relationship is another, and fidelity is another. Fidelity to a relationship? It's even possible. You promise to stay forever. Then there is the moral issue, the religious issue, the family issue, all of this is considered, isn't it? But fidelity to the relationship should not be absolute. 
it is necessary to consider how good or bad it is for your physical, mental and emotional health. It makes sense? Now, fidelity to the love lived, this must be absolute, according to Professor André Comte Sponville. The big problem is that when we think about fidelity in marriage, especially due to our Western conception of marriage, sexual fidelity always comes to mind. Let's make a clarification. Marriage, the way you see it and idealize it, is a socially, historically constructed vision. Marriage was not always seen this way. There is a video here on the channel. I will leave the link here on the card. The name of this video is The Pope Who Was Married. Tasty name, right? In this video, I tell you what marriage was like in the early days of the church at the beginning of Christianity, how he was thought and how he is seen today. I make biblical quotes, etc. It's really worth watching to broaden your mind and your view of relationships. I'm going to quote another phrase from Professor André Condesponville. Every virtue is a pinnacle between two vices, a ridge between two abysses, courage between cowardice and temerity, dignity between complacency and selfishness, sweetness between anger and apathy. But who can always live at the peak? Thinking about virtues is measuring the distance that separates us from them. Thinking about his excellence is thinking about our insufficiencies or our misery. See. No one stays forever on the summit. One day you will come down. Here the dualism of Hermeticism comes in again. See how the schools of thought talk to each other. Note how difficult it is for us to be able to say something in this sense. I will always do this thing, especially taking into account that our life is dual, it is an eternal seesaw. Don't think that what I'm saying is an excuse. No, no, it is not. We can be faithful. Soren Kierkegaard, a well-known philosopher among those in the field of philosophy, said the following, The most important thing is to be true to yourself. Considering this reasoning from Soren Kierkegaard and evaluating everything that has been said, I can be faithful to a relationship, I can be faithful to my conceptions, to my truth, to the things I believe. But this does not prevent and should not prevent me from reflecting and reviewing, if necessary, these truths of mine and the relationship itself. I need to open myself up to the new. Not because I have to adopt something new, but I need to confront these truths of mine with other circumstances, with other ideas. Even so, I can check if what I think and believe has substance. Because if you don't, we'll crumble in the face of another truth. We always have to open ourselves up to new things in a truly interested way with our ears open, our hearts open. You don't want to know so you can deny it. No, it's knowing to know. I have to be true to myself, but that doesn't mean I can't open up to new things. I even have an obligation to do so. So I must be faithful to a relationship. If I started a relationship with someone within the context that is socially acceptable, that is the standard of marriage, that is monogamous. So if I set myself this standard, I need to meet it, because it's a deal, right? However, this is mere loyalty, it is an adopted relationship pattern. I know it's a huge taboo that no one has the courage to talk about monogamy. Monogamy, it's a deal, a social agreement, it's the rule, but it's not something that works for everyone. This is obvious and everyone knows this, but no one has the courage to speak up. And in my opinion, this creates a big problem because when a person thinks about loyalty, they immediately associate it with sexual fidelity, associated with control over the partner's body. However, I believe it is already clear that loyalty goes far beyond that, right people? In the Osho's book that I mentioned, he talks a lot about loyalty making this distinction between fidelity and loyalty. But that's a topic for another video. So, that's it folks. Be true to yourself, that's the main point. If you are suffering in a relationship and have tried everything, there is no need to cheat on your partner. Separate. Is it possible to say that you will love forever? After everything we talked about, I'll let you give the answer in the comments. The fact is that we don't control feelings. We have very little control over our lives. That's the truth. It's a subject that gives a lot of thought, right?
Before finishing the video, I just want to make one more piece of merchandise. This shirt here, if you want to buy it, I'll leave the link here in the description. See you in the next video and thank you very much for following here until the end. Kiss to everyone. Until the next video.